Dave, you gonna talk about some more? You gotta teach me, man. Hey, I need I'm, to know I'm, I'm, ho I'm hopefully I'll be, I'll be dry by the time I'm done here because I got a lot to talk about. You know, like he was saying, the best spots in Florida. If you want to catch a blue marlin in Florida, it's got to be up in the Panhandle. It's probably your best bet. Jacksonville, off to where you live, about that. 60 miles out there, off that 27 fathom ridge there, and even a little further, and and probably after that, Key West, you know, Woods Wall out there. Those are probably the three best places you have a good chance of getting a, a blue marlin in Florida. Although there's a big school of bonita that hangs outside of Jupiter all summer, and if you were to sit there with a live bait every day for the summer, you'd probably you'd catch a couple. Yeah, yeah, you'd probably catch a couple over the course of a summertime. They like but, bonitas. Yeah, but when you're anytime you're fishing for for uh, for blue marlins, the first thing you're probably going to do is you're going to put some lures out. And that's mainly just to cover ground and start looking for fish. And plus you can still get bit, obviously, if you're pulling a lure like, like that wide range. I said a minute ago that that's probably the best marlin lure the in the world. Out. I've got a lot of friends who make lures who are probably, you know, turn it rolling on me right now. <laughs> right. But that's a Moldcraft wide range. And because it's designed as from a truncated cone. It goes fast and it goes slow. You can pull that at four knots or you can pull it at 16 to 18 knots oh, wow. and it stays in the water and it goes straight as an arrow. And that's what you want your lures to do when you're marlin fishing. You don't want a lure to be Gotta doing all right. Well, if he's doing all this swimming a lot of times, if you notice a marlin's got his eyeballs out on the side of his head and that long bill. And a lot of people think they use that bill as a weapon all the time. Well, they don't. They, they usually kill things with their mouth. They'll come up on a lure and they'll see that, you will see that bill come out of the water. Well, it's, he, he uses that as like a feeler, like a blind man using a cane. <laughs> when he gets up on, on, that, on, that, on that lure, he's, he, he loses sight of it because it's right in front of him. That's why they come over from the side a lot. You'll, you'll see him swim up to the side of the lure and get an eyeball on it and then eat it. Yeah, and they sure. eat it too. They don't whack it with that bill. Some swordfish thing, right? Yeah, swordfish like to whack right. things with their bill. But marlin don't. So you're going to be pulling lures at six to eight knots, usually a little faster if you're pulling lures, eight knots, because you're trying to cover ground and you're trying to find that good spot where there's a nice color change, a good temperature change, a weed line, something that's holding bait, a big school of tunas, you know, something like that. And when you find some, or if you get a bite, or you find something really nice, then you slow the boat down and you start putting out dead baits, like uh, your dead mackerels and your ballyhoos. And, and you put out teasers because you're in a good spot now, right? We don't care if a fish comes up because we, we think that there's enough of them there. We're not worried if he comes up and goes away. We don't want that to happen, but if we're in a good spot, we can put out a lot of teasers. So we got some teasers out there and we put pitch the ballyhoos to them. And if that's doing well, and we, or we see a big blue marlin up ahead on the weed line eating a dolphin or something, that's when you get out your live baits because, you know, the, the trolling lures, your hookup percentage is probably, you know, 50%. You know, some guys get better, but most for most fellas, it's 50%. And then dead bait, you're up to about 70%. You know, and if you're pitching, That's a big yeah. and if you're pitching, it can be a, a lot better than that if you have good guys. Yeah. But if you're using live baits, it's way up there, 70, 80% too, because it's a live fish on a circle hook down there. You usually want to use big, big circle hook, bridled through his eyeballs, and fished around either a big wreck you know, something on the bottom, any kind of bottom structure, you know, that's in really deep water, uh, a canyon, uh, an oil wherever rig, the bait is, an the oil bait rig is. or a big school of tuna. If you catch a, a little tuna, 10 foot pounder, 15 pounder out of a school of tuna, you bridle that joker up and you throw him right back down in the rest of them. And during the day, you know, a blue marlin will come by and visit that, that school of tuna fish. And if you do, that's when you're gonna get eat. So once you, a lot, of pro a lot of people make a mistake when they hook up a blue marlin. They see on TV where the guys will he'll, he'll run, the, run the thing forward, you know, trying to set the hook, they're saying, and the drag's just screaming out of the reel, and they're getting further and further away from the fish. That's all line that that guy's going to have to reel back in. Right. If, if drag is pulling off the reel, the fish is hooked. Yeah. We don't need to go that way away from him. All that does is just make the, the drag more actually eventually because the line just keeps longer. getting smaller and smaller and smaller but if you if you turn the hook turn the boat right when the fish is hooked say the fish you're looking out the back of the boat and the fish takes off to the right you're going to turn the boat to the right and you're going to have a guy who's just winding winding and you can winding. get it pretty quick that way right if you get up on that fish after he as soon as blue marlin eats he usually just goes crazy he gets up on the top of the water and he starts jumping and jumping and going nuts and if you can turn the boat and be there as soon as he stops all that jumping around 
and then you put the drag to them, oh, they'll roll over. They can't, even a great big fish. We catch, in Australia, we catch thousand pound marlins from the chair in 10 minutes, wow. sometimes less, yeah. because they eat that big bait. The captains know. It's a team effort when it you're doing that. It is, for yeah. sure. You know, it's, you know, if the boat works, you can get to any fish and get on top of them, and then you put that drag on them. And in Australia, you're using 130 pound gear, and you can use 90 pounds of drag. Wow. So, and if you're set up right in the chair, you can do it with a smile on you your put face. A lot of pressure you can on put a down. lot of your, I mean, you're grinning. You don't, you don't, it, and it can be just a, a matter of a couple inches on the gimbal and a couple inches on your, on your harness that makes all the difference in the world. And if you have really good guys who set you up properly, you can put tremendous heat on these fish. And that's what kills every fish is drag. Now right. you'll hear a lot of guys who I told you before, they'll say, oh, if you don't put a lot of drag on them, they'll be up on the surface. Well, if that was the case, we could all just use four pound and we'd all just follow marlins around until we caught them. And that doesn't usually work. You need right. to put a lot of drag and heat on them. So got to get them in quick. I think we're about done. Yeah. All right. Dave, great information, man. When are you going to take me? Well, we can go whenever you come up with some cash. <laughs> Marlin University, here we come. There you go. Come and get that man some water. He, he just talked a lot. <laughs>